Creating a culture of unity today on Communion and Coffee. Let's go. Hey folks, Apostle Lewis here with you and so glad you're with me and um, hope you got your coffee out. Yep, it's back. We'll see how long we keep it. It 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 could it'll make it through at least another week, but we'll we'll see after that. I think I like the convenience of not shaving my whole face for about a month, and uh, uh, even though I shave the sides because that just annoys me. But um, uh, so let's talk about this. You know, one of the things that <clears throat> when I grew up in the you know when I when I say grew up when I got saved, <clears throat> I I got. Uh, I went to a Baptist church, Southern Baptist church, for the first year. And what did the Southern Baptist church teach? Taught us doctrine, and which, by the way, I love, I believe in absolute truth. I do believe that. And um, and so, would I don't ever want anyone to think that I, I want, I think wishy-washy doctrine is okay. I don't believe that. But there's some things in here. What do we do in our in church culture? Let, let, let's put this way. This is why the church is divided. Let's just take the black white issue. What do you do with someone who honestly, you know, votes Democrat? And you go, they, they, how could they do that? Or how can they do? They vote Republican. How can they do that? What do you do with that? Well, the question is, do we believe in Jesus together? And the question is, what are what is our core values that we agree on? Do we believe on the blood of Jesus? Do we believe that it is through faith in him that one is saved? Do we believe in the holy word of God? Because you know what it doesn't say in here, Republican or Democrat. It doesn't say, by the way, I don't think either one of them are good. I think that's the whole deception. I think the whole deception is you actually, you know, if you actually think there's a difference between Democrat and Republican. I don't think there is. I think they both want to rule the world and they both have their, what I call their political mob network of people. Okay. And I'm going to get into this uh, on this week's um, weekly Kingdom Outlook because I'm going to do about an hour one on Cuomo and all the masks, the vaccines, all that stuff. I'm going to do a very long one this week. So look forward to that. Well, what do we do with how do we handle, I guess would be the better question, how do we handle when we disagree? Because that's going to be the big key, right? How do we handle disagreement? How do we handle, um, and so, you know, I've never made my leaders agree. And, and you know, the, but here, I want to talk about this. This is I'm going to try to put this in the words. What I found is most Christians don't have a grid for disagreement. They don't have a grid for it. They don't have, I think Dan Farley said there's 33,000 different Christian denominations. Okay, 33,000 of them. Boy, are some people going to be shocked when we get to heaven. And what do we do? with the ones who don't believe in talking in tongues and the ones who do. What do we do about the ones who who believe there are those who actually believe abortion is okay? What do we do with that? You know, do you know, what do you do? Now, there are things I will not compromise on is sexual sin, fornication, adultery and homosexuality. We'll not compromise on that. Because Paul explicitly, Scripture, expli and Jesus explicitly taught on it. What Jesus did, yeah, he did. Marriage is between a man and a woman, and man, marriage was from God. Therefore, God is the only one who can uh, describe and define what marriage is because it came from him. He joined Adam and Eve and, and brought them together. And and so there is no, it's not like it was, it's not a man made thing. I don't care if you want to get married somewhere else and all that. I don't care. But as far as the church, that should be, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ordain. Uh, I'm, people go, would you ordain homosexuals? Would I, would I ordain someone who's in adultery? The answer is no. And so it's, a, it's, it's like, 
But you see, this is what they say. This is how they say it. You're against homosexuals. No, I'm against homosexuality. I'm not against adulterers. I'm against adultery. I'm for the person against the sin. But what do you do on some of the lesser issues? And, and I don't want to make them sound lesser because all sins are really not created equal. But let's say, you know, can you understand how a, a black person growing up in America does not trust <laughs> the government? Now, they've been taught. Now, you got to understand it. They have been taught in culture that the Republicans are the ones that threw them in slavery. And it's the white guy. Of course, they're listening to this from white people. And and that it, it, when you, how do you get, there was an article once of a, a video and that someone told me about it, that this Muslim man took his little boy up over the hill over Jerusalem. And he said to his son every day, every day he would take his son there and look over Jerusalem and say, your destiny is to kill as many Jews as you can. Now, can you understand that that child growing up becomes a suicide bomber? Now, you might hate him. You might say, he must, he should know better. Okay, but I'm telling you, <clears throat> you know, no, he should, but his father should have known better. And you can greatly affect the way people think. And the only reason you know better is, the, you know, a couple of reasons. Maybe you had a better upbringing or maybe you got lucky in Jesus Christ because, you know, I didn't care about abortion before I got saved. I didn't, I wasn't into homosexual. I didn't want to, you know, didn't want to participate in that at all, but I didn't care. You know, I didn't care for it, but I didn't care. It wasn't like I thought about it as being sin. It just, number one, I grew up centuries ago and uh, a little different. But what do you do? What do you do with someone who, you know, wants to stand up for Black Lives Matter? Because in them, they see how blacks, I have a friend right now who is really doing such a great work amongst, I know I'm going to say this wrong, but Native Americans, indigenous I, people, um, uh, you know, uh, Indians, and, and, doing, and I know there's all these different words. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't mean it in a racist term, but, you know, indigenous people, whatever you want to call them, uh, people. And another ethnicity and they could be seminal let's just go to you know, seminal or whatever and she's doing such a great work amongst them and has such a heart for them could you see them being upset with what happened 200 years ago and the you know in the trail of tears 100 and well about 200 years ago the trail of tears um can you see them being upset i can i absolutely can and, and um, they have a different filter than I have. My father, my grandfather came here from Italy. His mother put him on, and his sister on a ship in Naples, Italy. And he set sail for America one month before World War I broke out. And his mother stayed behind and passed away. His father was here and his brother was here. My uncle Fernando was already here. It might have been, not Fernando, Fernandino, I think might have been his name. But he was already here in Brooklyn, uh, in the Bronx. And that's where my grandfather came to live with. And my grandfather never talked to me about Italy. Why? Because after that came Mussolini. And my grandfather despised, you know, Mussolini. And he rightfully so. And so I have a different culture than you. And, and I don't expect you to understand my culture. I don't expect you to believe that... You know, Italians were redlined in the banks as well, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Up until the end of World War II, about 20 years before uh, black, it ended for black Americans. It ended for Italian Americans. And um, uh, that doesn't make it right. I'm just saying, like, my my ancestors faced that. My, um, my, my grandfather lived through the Great Depression making pennies on the day, you know. Uh, my grandfather also was a World War I vet. My, I mean, I, we all have experiences. What do we do when those experiences are so diverse? Well, we have unity. And what is unity? Well, number one, just take it down for this. Is, everyone has been created by God. Let's start there. Now, everyone's not been is not a child of God or born of God. But let's just look. Remember, James tells us, how can you curse, you know, your brother? And he is talking about a Christian in a way, but because uh, when he calls him your brother, he's not talking about another human being. He's talking about your covenant brother. And how do you know that? 
in the covenant of Jesus Christ, we have people that are from all tribes and tongues. And we might not agree on everything. What, what is unity? Unity is not us all agreeing. And that's why we have such problems within the church because there is a, there is the scent of, uh, of cult attitude when everyone has to rape. Now, I remember saying one time, <laughs> I love doing this. I, I don't want to call her out because she's such a dear friend. But she said to me, when you first said, when I first came to your church and you said, I want, we're going to be like a family. It freaked her out because she didn't know what that was like. What do you do with your friends that vote for Biden? Because they really believe Trump's a bad guy. What do you do? You love them. Now, what you also do is you don't talk about it and argue about it. You realize this is too weird. Whenever we find a place of that kind of contention, we don't need to discuss it here. Why? Because if we discuss it here, we know it just brings a fight. And it's not as important as me and you in the body connecting. Most people, now I grew up in the Catholic Church, so you got to understand if you weren't Catholic, you were going to hell. Now, I didn't know all that. <laughs> I was not a good Catholic. I was a very bad Catholic. I, I not understand the doctrine until I became a Christian. Um, but what do you do when, you know, there is that uh, almost cultish, um, attitude. Uh, so this is how denominations work. This is what we believe. If you don't believe being, 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 being this, leave. This church is not for you. And a lot of people look at all churches the same way. What do you believe? Blah, 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 blah. Some people look at churches as, do you have a kid's program? Because my kids won't come to church. It's a problem. My kids never told us they weren't coming to church. We, we had, well, our kids were always in church because we had home church. And so they were always in church. They've always served. That was the other thing my kids did. Always had to serve in the church. Always did. Uh, Jessica still does. Jordan did. Joseph did. And, and they had a, a healthy attitude towards the church. Now, what do you do when you don't agree? I would tell my leadership this. You don't have to, you, you can disagree, but you can't disconnect. But that, just because you say that doesn't mean everyone has that grid. I have found that saying that doesn't work for a lot of people. They have this absolute attitude that if you don't agree uh, with what I'm saying here, then that is absolutely, we can't be together. And I've had, min I've had ministers at my church who literally were so mad because they were so sure about that Jesus was coming back and you know 10 years ago and and I just didn't agree with it. they 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 would want to bring their theological books and they were going to tell me all this stuff I said look I I don't care my assignment is not predicting Jesus's return my assignment is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ that's it what do you do when you disagree that's a big deal and I found that a lot of people struggle with that. And why do they struggle with that? Because they grew up in a culture where if someone doesn't agree with you, you can't be their friend. It's how our culture is built. Now, just so you know, I don't agree with everything Dan Duke believes. I don't agree with everything that Randy Lechner believes. I don't agree with everything that Bill Johnson believes. I don't agree with everything that Rodney Howard Brown believes believes. I don't agree with everything that Todd believes. I don't agree with everything that Margaret Burke believes. We have different approaches to the same topics, but I'll tell you what I do. I love all of them and I cherish uh, what they, what their insight is and what even their perspective is. And I learn from it because I'm not looking for people to reinforce what I believe, which is what church normally does. And, you know, me and Margaret, you know, by the way, let me just say this. Kathy and me don't agree on everything. And we've been married almost 34 years. Marriages blow up over stupid stuff. 
We don't agree. Now, you hear people say, you got to be in agreement. You got to be, yeah, we're in agreement, but we don't always agree about everything, but we're in agreement. What's one of our agreements? Jesus Christ. What's our other agreement? We love each other to death to his part. We're going to raise our kids in Christ. I mean, there's things we've agreed upon, but by the way, Kathy, if I said, what's your end time belief system? Kathy's going to go, what? Huh? What? It's not even Kathy's radar. Okay. Why is it, and see, what it is a lot of times is dominance. If I make you believe everything that I believe, then I dominate you. And if I have to believe everything you believe, then you dominate me. And that is not how to have unity, and that's not how to have a relationship. We should be teaching people how to think, how to examine Scripture. Otherwise, you sit in a classroom and, you know, I, I remember Dion saying that when he went to seminary, he literally had notes on every page of his Bible of what everything meant. And I looked at him and said, well, that's kind of crazy since you should just be able to read the scripture. But literally in seminary, they told him everything that you have to believe. And then when he went on his honeymoon or something like that, went on vacation, that Bible got lost. And I said, it's probably the best thing that ever happened to you. I'm not into that. And that is what I've realized, though. Not everyone can handle that. There's a couple things that I don't like to tolerate in my circle. Gossip. Gossip about each other. In other words, um, I don't tolerate leaders talking about other leaders. Why? Because there needs to be such a, a bond of trust that when you're talking behind someone's back, that's just demonic by the way. Um, I don't go for that. Um, you know, I, I, I have a lot of friends that I never ask them what they think about certain things. Because I love them. When I met Charles Coker, <laughs> such a funny story. Charles, um, he was broken. And the Lord, he meets me and then he tells the Lord, the Lord tells him, that's your, um, that's an apostle. And, and I didn't say that to Charles, and I didn't, no one said that to Charles. Charles, that's what, that's his testimony. That's an, that's an apostolic father, he said. And he said, <laughs> Charles, bullcrap. And the Lord says, Charles, that's an apostolic father. And he goes, well, if he's an apostolic father, then... He'll have a prophetic word for me, and I won't have to give him something. He'll give something to me. And so the meeting went on, and Charles is in front of me, and I prophesy over Charles a good tip. I mean, I read his mail. And then I go to Margaret. And I go, Margaret, would you give Charles one of everything off my table? We'll just give him one of everything. And Charles sat there and was stunned. And then Charles came up to me the next night the meeting goes, Will you be my spiritual father? And I said, no. And he looked at me and said, what do you mean no? I said, Charles, I'm not your spiritual father, but I will be a heck of a brother to you and love you until, and you know, I'll love you. I'll, we'll be brothers for the rest of our lives. And God will send your father, but I'll be here for you until, you know, as, that, as God brings that about. But I, I knew I wasn't a spiritual father. Fathers... You know, my kids have diverse thinking. They don't think the way I think. And there's times I tell them, will you just listen to me? Let me just at least listen to something I have to say and learn. Something on this topic. I might know more about scripture than you do. But my kids, I, all my kids are opinionated. Now, that might sound evil. In other words, what I mean by that, my kids have thought about things and they have an opinion on it they have a thought on it opinionated isn't a problem it's only when it becomes in this diet you know people go well you should have an opinion number one i don't have to give you my opinion on everything which is something i don't always do i'm like eh. I'm, i learned this really well from danny silk and and danny silk said this 
someone asked, how is it you guys stay together? You guys ever have disagreements? And Danny goes, oh my God, do we have disagreements? We have major disagreements. He said, but we don't bring those up anymore. They're not over the blood of Jesus. They're not over salvation. They might be on some fringe interpretation of what they, what they, how they're trying to walk out the kingdom or what they say. And what I've never done is I don't tell... I don't tell, well, I shouldn't say I've never done it. Sometimes me and Margaret talk about we're going to preach on this because this is where we feel like the church needs to go. But I don't tell Margaret what to necessarily preach. I don't tell Jerry and Denise what to preach. I have Jerry, Denise, Margaret, um, uh, Jeremy and Carrie, and Kiefer doing videos. I don't tell them what to preach on. I'm, I'm giving them that opportunity so that they learn how to teach and preach and share and do that stuff. And because we only have Sunday mornings, I don't have the time. I can't give them each a Sunday morning a month. It won't work. And so what happens, and what I try to do on Sunday mornings is just strengthen the body. But I don't, I don't have a, you know, but here's here's the thing. I, I have had people leave because they disagreed. Never told me. Left poorly, by the way. Sometimes they leave in bad mouth. I've had people leave and lie about me. It's a different story, a different, a different thing. Um, but what you don't see is that 10 years later, how they come back and say, Hey, would you forgive me? I, cause they went somewhere else. They got a different perspective and, and, and that perspective finally let them see what I was saying that they didn't see before. And, um, you know, <clears throat> you're going to get challenged or let's put it a different way. You're going to get offended. What is it? What is it offended sometimes? It's it's something that I'm going to have to stop and think about. I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about, wow, this is what makes, you know, my relationship with Randy, my relationship. By the way, I don't have that kind of relationship with, with Rodney, where me and Rodney talk. Even though I, I, I've, I've talked with Rodney, but we don't do that on a regular basis. Uh you know, I don't agree with everything that Bill says, and Bill doesn't agree with, won't agree with everything I say. But I learn from everything, and you know, Chris and Bill don't always agree, and Todd and Bill don't always agree, and 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 that's okay. That's how you have unity in the. See, people say you need diversity to have unity. I don't agree with that. I think that if you're going to be in unity, you have to welcome diversity. But I don't think you only have unity in diversity. I think that's kind of, that's not, that's not really, uh, that, I don't agree with that one. I, I agree that if you're going to have unity in the spirit and you're going to open your arms, if I want to be a spiritual father, the last thing I want to do is make people agree with, I don't teach, I don't teach, um, my spiritual sons and daughters, everything that they have to think. Now, they might, I mean, I'm teaching, so that's why I tell people, go listen to other stuff. Go to other conferences. Go do that. It's important you get as much feedback as you can so you can learn. When I grew up in the prophetic, I only got a couple more minutes. I actually have as long as I want to go. Forget that. When I grew up in the prophetic, there are different ways to train prophetic people. There are different philosophies in the prophetic. And then there are seers and nabi prophets, and you get all this streams. You have stream here, stream there, blah, 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 streams. They don't all agree. But you know what? I learned to enhance my spiritual, my, my calling as a prophet. I learned from Kim Clement, Randy and Kathy Letcher, Bill Hammond, James Gull, John Paul Jackson, uh, Rick Joyner a little bit because I didn't get around Rick that much, um, uh, and just the, no, the names go on. Okay, and I don't know if I said Kim Clement, but Kim Clement was one who believe you know he just had different philosophy of how the he had. A, here's what we do: God moves through us a certain way. We teach that as doctrine. But I've had people like. If you don't believe Jesus is coming back in this lifetime, I can't come to your church. Well, and, you know, there are plenty of churches who believe that. So if that's a sticky point for you, please go to another church. But I, I 
I don't need to, that's not my fear. You know, I'm not worried about when he comes back. I'm 56 years old. To act like I have 20 more years guaranteed is a foolish thought. I'm not on borrowed time necessarily, but I'm thankful every day that I wake up. Every day I'm thankful. I'm not looking for death. I'm not like, oh, death. I'm not, but I'm thankful every day. I'm 56. And I'm going, God, you have so blessed me with another day. And I, I don't I, I don't feel my assignment is Jesus coming back in my lifetime. What if he doesn't? Did I leave another generation? Did I prepare a people to follow, to go after me? To continue on? And that's tough for people. And even in my family, there's diversity. My natural family up in Connecticut, there's diversity of thought. Even in my family with my children, I've raised them to think for themselves. Now, they are godly kids. They, but they're not as, you know, they're not as vocal as I am. Things that bother would bother me don't bother them as much. But I, I also, my goal is, you know, carrying the presence. And it might not be their total focus every day. Even though, you know, I love it when my kids tell me, oh, yeah, you know, Dad, I'm reading the Bible and, and, you know, um, it, it is, it is, you want to be a minister? <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy sometimes. It's, um, my, 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 my father-in-law, every time he preached something that they disagreed with, he got fired. And this is how it worked in these little churches. He would preach something. There's usually like five deacons. They're all brothers and sisters. They're all brothers because Baptist church was no women. They're brothers and parents and cousins. They're all men. They're all in the family. Half of them agree with you. Half of them don't. It creates a family split, which creates a church split. And the only way they can get back together is to bring someone else in because they, they agree he's the problem because he preached something we didn't agree upon and he divided the church. Now, that's their attitude. Do you know what it would be like for ministers every day? This is why power doesn't flow in many churches, because every day ministers get up and they think, make sure you don't offend that group. I know ministers who preach their sermons once, have it critiqued and changed, and they read it again the next day. One sermon is a trial run. They, they'll have big churches, but you won't have big people. Big churches, but you won't have diversity. You won't have power. You won't. Why? Because guess what? <laughs> you know, when we started church in 07, there were some people there. They didn't want to go two hours. They were used to an hour morning service. And I was like, look, I'm after revival. I told you that in the meetings. That's what I'm after. Revival. And I had to train the worship team, number one, to go farther because they were so used to three songs, be done in 15 minutes, preach for 35, 40, do an altar call, get out of it. That's what they were used to. And I said, no, no, you cannot, ho you know, you might not even get in this, in the presence in 15 minutes. The idea that once you start praising, you're in his presence is, I talked about this yesterday about. Even when I pray in tongues, I ain't in the spirit right away. I got to break through and into that. <sighs> Why is that so difficult? Well, because our, our model is denominations and not family. I, I, I think you need to understand, like, Joseph, uh, Jacob's kids didn't all agree. David's sons didn't all agree. And Jesus' disciples didn't all agree. Even the apostles in Acts 15 didn't all agree. They had to come together and seek out God on a very important topic. And this was one that was very... But by the way, Paul disagrees with them later. They sit there and say four things. And one of them is, don't eat meat sacrificed to idols. Paul later on says, hey, if you got a clear conscience, 
receive it with thanksgiving and prayer. Because it's the, it's it's sanctified by the word of God in prayer. And so don't worry about it. But however, if it causes this one to stumble, then don't eat it. Then then don't do it. But wait a minute. Why didn't Paul agree? Because Paul understood, like, I, I don't agree with that one. They remember their whole agreement was circumcision. That was what they were checking on in Acts 15. They come out with what they should have come out with, sexual morality of sin. Not everyone, by the way, there are some churches who do not agree with that. I'm not for that. Why? Because it's so explicit in Scripture. Because sexual sin is actually worship. It's demonic worship, is sexual sin. It's either worshiping yourself or it's worshiping Satan. And so I'm not for that. You know, whether you're worshiping Satan knowingly or unknowingly isn't isn't good. But people, I love when people go, well, but you don't have to agree. But you won't preach at my church because the only ones I allow preaching at my church is, is a trust through relationship. And I'm not going to have someone. I had one preacher want to preach on the end times. I'm like, no, that's just not our focus here. And uh, he was a member. And he was like, I, I want to preach. I said, no, I'm, I'm, we're, that's just not what. He wanted to give his thoughts on it. I'm like, no. It's not our fault. We're kingdom focused here. What has God called us to do? And let's do it. And that's that. Amen? Look, you're, you, if, 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 that is the hardest thing I found amongst Christians to do. Is to have diversity of thought. That that is that is, diversity of color. Let's let's just not even go there. That's easy. Diversity of ethnicity. That's easy. We should have an issue with that. But the diversity of thought, because what we believe me is very important to us, but what they believe is important to them too. And what I want to do is add my salt to them in flavor. So maybe someone's like, "Hey, I I I believe." Black Lives Matter. Okay, I do too. I agree with you on that. Well, I'm going out and marching with. Well, I'm not going to do that. By the way, I don't march sign with abortion. I, I don't march with signs. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a sign carrier. Period. So, it really doesn't matter what the cause is. I'm not doing that. But there's some problems I have now. Do I think all the people who are wanting? I can understand the anger. I, I I've said it for. 25, 30 years. That what that this government, deep state, purposely went out to destroy the black. By the way, listen to my podcast coming out later on this week where I'm gonna talk about Bill Gates, you, you know, uh eugenics and where that's coming back into play, which you know is the Nazi regime and where that's coming back in, and that never really left, and uh it's coming back. And we need to brace, uh, be prepared to resist it. But that's coming. And uh, I'm going to talk just about some news items. Um, and we'll do that. Uh, but you've got to have the... Ver now, I'll challenge some demonic thought. Don't get me wrong. But, man, I you got to be able to... I learned this. I, I tell you where I really learned this the best is Bill. I learned it because I, Bill once told me, I go places, he said this to me, I go places and where they do things that we would never do at Bethel, but I'm there to serve that minister and bring my gift to that house. I'm not there to change them. That was, by the way, that was completely different than when I was raised up in, in ministry. Now, I, and that's where my ministry is. That's why I can flow with people. Because I'm there to, I'm, I'm salt. And salt has to have flavor, and I'm just going to add my flavor. So when I leave, someone goes, well, that meeting was different with, with, with Lewis because, man, there's just a different essence that came in, a different, you know, they don't know it, but he added flavor to the house. He added a dimension to the house that we haven't had, and it really impacted us. Amen.
Amen. I hope that helps this morning. I, I hope this touches you. By the way, uh, Thursday I'll be driving up to, I'll be making all my videos earlier in the week, but Thursday I'll be driving up to New Jersey. I'll be up there with Todd Bentley and Revival Harvest America. And for those of you that have supported Kathy and I uh, in our ministry, thank you. Uh, man, you're such a blessing. But we're going to talk maybe next week, and maybe I'll make a note of this, to talk about how we do relationships will affect us more sometimes than doctrine because we can sow some really bad stuff that can stay with us a very long time. So we'll talk about that maybe next time. I hope you have a great day. If you like this video, like it, share it, and follow me on Locals. Okay, follow me on Locals, and uh, hope to see you then. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.